the difference between a referred pain and a radicular pain. If I were to tell you, let's just take an example, if I were to tell you that the person injured their medial elbow and it caused pain to refer along the ulnar nerve into the wrist. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't make sense because what I'm saying by saying that there's an injury here referring down this nerve is incorrect because referred pain really has nothing to do with, with the nervous system per se. Referred pain is a confusion of the nervous system as to where the original pain was coming from but it doesn't track along a peripheral nerve. That would be radicular pain. Mm -hmm. So how does referred pain come about? There, there's various theories. The best of those theories is that the confusion occurs in the dorsal root ganglion. So what happens is you have the brain, okay, central nervous system, spinal cord. So if there is someone's arm here, Okay. And there's the elbow and there's their arm. So if the problem is right here at the elbow, so that's where the injury has occurred. That's where there's pathology. But the person ends up feeling pain, let's say, somewhere in the wrist, in this region here. And what they're going to describe if it's a referred pain, they're not going to be very specific with it. Referred pain is never described as, I have pain right there. Referred pain is always like, I don't know, I have pain kind of in this region here. And that's a good indication that that pain is being referred. Now, if the injury is at the elbow, that means there's nothing really pathologically wrong with the wrist where the pain is being uh, referred to. So where is the problem? The problem lies in when the signal comes from the injured area, the afferent information of nociception comes in towards the central nervous system. But on its way, it's going to enter the dorsal root ganglion. The dorsal root ganglion, which is on every spinal segment, or every spinal level, has a lot of information passing in, in and through it, in both directions. So there can be confusion as to where the original signal came from. So when it goes into the dorsal root ganglion, when there's confusion within the ganglion as to the, the origin of the pain, the message that gets sent up to the thalamus, and then eventually to the postcentral gyrus and to the sensory cortex, is going to be a confused signal such that the brain is going to register the nociceptive signal as pain occurring not only in the area of the origin but also in any area that developed from the same somite embryologically. So you guys remember the somites uh, in embryology class. They gave you a picture of the, uh, the, the spinal cord and then they had the nerve roots coming out like this and every nerve root went to a piece of tissue that they referred to as a somite. You guys remember this, this diagram from school? Something like this. And each somite then would spread out during development and form different things. So some of them will form muscles, some of them will form ligaments, some of them will form bones. But the original neural pattern remains intact. Okay. So if this particular somite, if part of the somite developed this section of the elbow and another part of the somite developed this section of the wrist, when the signal in an adult person goes into the, the dorsal root ganglion and confusion occurs, your thalamus and the signal going to your sensory cortex will assume that the pain is coming from that spot as well as anything else that developed from the same somite. And that's called a referred pain. So technically, there's nothing wrong here. It's a problem here and a problem with the signal going upwards. Because you remember, sensory innervation never goes down. It's not like you have a problem here and it's referring down the arm. That's not how things work. Nociceptive signal goes up. Okay, so that's a referred pain.